सेव किया था ना मैं सिर्फ इसलिए गया था क्योंकि उसने मुझे कॉल किया दैट्स इट बट लिसन तो सेव इट फॉर समवन एल्स जिंदगी में सेव करना जरूरी है मगर जब बात पैसों की हो सिर्फ सेविंग से काम नहीं चलेगा इक्विटी म्यूचुअल फंड्स में इन्वेस्ट कीजिए और अपने सेविंग्स को आगे बढ़ने का मौका दीजिए म्यूचुअल फंड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स आर सब्जेक्ट टू मार्केट रिस्क रीड ऑल स्कीम रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंट्स केयरफुली हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द प्रिंट यू वॉचिंग पॉलीग्राफ विद मी अक्षा नाथ सीनियर असिस्टेंट एडिटर विद प्रिंट एंड जॉइनिंग मी इज डी के सिंह पोलिटिकल एडिटर विद प्रिंट Today we will be taking a deep dive into the issue of what is really happening between the alliance partners AIADMK and the BJP. In the last one week we've seen several AIADMK and BJP cadres switching sides and also angry cadres burning pictures of Edappadi K Palni Swami and of K Anamalai. While the leaders maintain that the alliance will go forward as it is, we're seeing that the fissure lines are coming out in open. K Anamalai, the BJP state president, had made a remark stating that the kind of poaching that is happening from the Dravidian parties on the BJP only indicates the BJP's growth in the state of Tamil Nadu. Meanwhile, the AIADMK has maintained that there has been no intention of poaching, but only those cadres who are joining the AIADMK are joining with. a new agenda or a new growth pattern that they want to happen in the AIDMK well we're seeing that with just 13 months left before the lok sabha polls of 2024 what is really happening between the alliance and i want to bring dk singh here sir can you tell us what really is happening between the alliance do you think they will survive or you know there is going to be a full stop before the lok sabha polls uh, i don't really see this alliance breaking as such we heard uh, eps Declaring only last month that the alliance is there till the 2024 Lok Sabha elections at least, and despite all these talks in the past few days, I don't really see act, see it making much impact in terms of their you know understanding or uh, coalition to right, alliance. Primarily because uh, I don't really see EPS having any other option because as it is. in tamil nadu dmk has been playing this uh, tamil sub nationalism plank i mean they have been doing it very well right from the alleged imposition of hindi to you know imposition of neet uh, of course the governor has also been helping him in his uh, political pursuit with, with his own remarks he is very much there he is trying to project basically that you know a north indian party like the bjp as as the dmk would project it a hindi a party which wants to impose hindi hindutva on tamil nadu now aidmk is aligned with that party so aidmk does not really have much to talk about in terms of its projection you tell me why would the people people vote for the aidmk it did not have the charismatic leader like jalalita anymore why would people vote for eps in 2024 lok sabha election that's where he needs narendra modi but you Maybe dismissing of dismissing of the BJP's prospects in Tamil Nadu, but the fact is, Narendra Modi is still a name. He does draw crowds, and when you are talking about Lok Sabha elections, at least the AIA DMK will have something to bank on, some name to bank on, to show that okay, you vote for BJP, you vote with vote for us, and probably we'll be bringing this and that from the center. So Modi name is pretty important for. Uh, EPS in the short term I mean, until 2024 Lok Sabha election. Another reason I would say is uh, you know you can't really leave the BJP side and try to uh, build your own brand in, uh, now because you have already abandoned or you have already ousted uh, Open Op- Selvam. Just imagine the BJP abandoned by uh, the AIA DMK, the official, the man who is officially holding that general secretary's position now. Going with OPS in southern part of Tamil Nadu, for instance, mm-hmm. because OPS is the caste fault line we are talking about. Palani Sami just brings counter votes. Mm-hmm. He doesn't have any hold on Thevar or other castes. Now you have OPS with the prominent AIA DMK face of the Thevars, and Thevars in South Tamil Nadu primarily vo- have been voting for the BJP because. Of OPS, Sasi Kala. I mean, the way during Jalalita's time, the th- they were leaders were built. You break your alliance with the BJP. BJP will have no option but to go with 
OPS, Sasikala, and then you are almost out of uh, southern part of Tamil Nadu. We are talking about as many as 60 seats in South Tamil Nadu. Mm -hmm. EPS has not been able to build any leadership there. True. You do that, you are confined to whatever influence EPS has in the western parts, western districts. That's not good enough. So politically also, it does not suit the EPS. The EPS uh, faction are actually the, the AIDMK led by EPS today. So that's my second reason. As for what is happening today, all these, uh, you know, aggression, aggressive uh, posturing that we have been witnessing from both sides. I think now that EPS is completely in control of the party, he's trying to send a message that he's not playing second fiddle to the BJP. Something that the DMK has been seeking to build on. Mm. He's just trying to counter that image. That's one. Secondly, I think what he would like to do now uh, till 2024, he would be looking at some kind of uh, relationship that you have, say, in the Northeast, the, the kind of relationship the BJP has, even if in the Northeast, you don't really see the BJP having much stake. But look at it, everywhere they're in power. Correct. So for, e for EPS, there are two options. Either you become Konyad Sangma of Meghalaya, or you become Nephew Rio. In terms of how you deal with the BJP, why I'm taking these two names, if you look at Nagaland, for instance. So again, many people would be saying that in Tamil Nadu, there is no Hindu vote bank, BJP has no future, forget that. How BJP uses its alliance partners to grow, Nagaland is a big example. Mm. Now, in 13 looks, Nagaland is a predominantly Christian state. Mm. BJP getting over 18% votes this time. So surprise everyone. Just as you, you'll be surprised about the BJP's uh, prospects in Tamil Nadu. In Nagaland, who counted on BJP? In 2013 assembly election, BJP got less than 2% votes. In Nagaland, 2018, the BJP gets around 15%, and then 3.5% more in this election. So yes. how does you use the small regional parties? How Amit Shah, or I would say Amit Shah primarily, because the entire thing started uh, with his presidency. So how Amit Shah used the regional parties to, in fact, expand the party's footprints in Nagaland. And today, if you, uh, if you look at Nagaland ministry, if you have 12 ministers, seven are from NDPP and five from BJP. BJP has only 12 MLAs. Half of them are, almost half of them are ministers today. That kind of influence, BJP is running the government there. What would be the reason? I mean, I'm just bringing this Christian factor here that it's a mm -hmm. Christian history. We also know how, you know, Northeast politics does not work like that. It's who is ruling the power, who's ruling the ruling party at the center actually dictates a lot of what happens on the ground. That's one. So I'm talking about the Nefu Rio example. Another is Conrad Sangma. If you look at how Conrad Sangma has managed to contain the BJP. Now, BJP got two MLAs, Comrade Sangma, because you always need a center behind you. Hmm. Out of two MLAs, one became a minister in Comrade Sangma government. But Comrade Sangma remained constantly critical with the BJP, even if BJP was an ally. Hmm. After the two broke the ties, and Comrade Sangma decided to go alone, not to go with the BJP for obvious reasons. Again, Meghalaya is a Christian, a predominantly Christian state. BJP went alone, went after Conrad Sangma, his party NPP, but could manage just two MLAs, mm. as many as it had earlier. Its vote share has not gone up. If at all it has dropped by, say, 0 0.20 percentage point or something. So one is while you need the BJP in your government, because you need the center with you, mm. you need the BJP with you, have them in an alliance with you. But you do not want to allow the BJP to grow beyond a point. True. The Furio could not do that. In Nagaland, BJP has been growing, not probably at uh, NDPP's cost, but at the cost of other parties. But in Meghalaya, Conrad Sangma has contained. Mm. And places you have the BJP in the government. What is the EPS looking at? This probably- I think that strategy- the I think one of the strategies BJP would be that. may have, uh, sorry, EPS may have in his mind that how to contain the BJP while being a benef beneficiary of their lives. True. So just to sum it all, uh, you know, till 2024, I see, I see them going together. After 24, uh, it depends. Because mm. then 
you know, we heard after 2021 assembly election, how many AIDMK leaders we started saying that BJP has become a liability. So after probably in the assembly election, uh, EPS may not need the BJP as much as it, as it does in this election, in 2024 election. But everything depends on how the BJP grows from here. Hmm. So, so, we have, so we also have a question from one of our viewers. Hmm. Uh, to, uh, and uh, he has asked, uh, I follow Anamalai quite closely. He seems very positive in all his interviews and seems like a true leader. But what is the reality really on ground? Does he stand a chance against the veteran DMK and AIA DMK leaders? Well, I think you should be answering that question, Akshay, because you have just interviewed him. You have spent an hour with him. I, in fact, I would like our viewers to watch that interview. It's a brilliant interview. But you have had this interaction just about a week back. I would actually like you to weigh in on this subject. So Anamale is just two years into politics in the state of Tamil Nadu. But in the two years, the kind of impact that he's made is immense. And that has to be credited for. Because while the AIADMK has been having its internal commotions, internal splits and power struggles, we've seen Anamale making utilize of this entire scenario. He has in a way, tried to bring in a lot of issues. He's made the noise. He's grabbed the media attention. He's been in the limelight, which is one thing that the BJP was lacking before his entry in uh, politics. Uh, and we had seen that the BJP in Tamil Nadu prior to Anamalai had also tried multiple ways. Like if you see, El Murugan had tried his veil yatra, but all of those attempts had fizzled out after a few days. But Anamalai has been having this kind of a travel struggle with the DMK, where at many a times we've seen DMK leadership trying to correct or rectify or give a clarification to every uh, remark that he's made. So that is kind of a huge impact that Anamalai has brought to the table is what I think. Uh, at the same time, while we talk about uh, whether he will be able to fight the veteran a DMK and ADMK that the question asks, that is something that we'll have to wait and watch because what Anamalai has been saying as projection of the growth of the BJP in the state of Tamil Nadu, we'll only get to understand that when an actual uh, electoral victory or an electoral gain is there for the BJP. Only then will we be able to understand if actually the penetration of BJP has happened in the state or not. But projection-wise, the perception-wise, well, he has brought to the table a thought process at least that they have grown. And he is very confident a leader. He has been a, a bridging force between the AI and DMK before the A-Road poll, bipolar elections. And we had also seen the way in which he has been uh, you know, trying to say that he wants to emulate Jayalalitha and Karnanedi during this uh, recent uh, uh, jumping of ships by the BJP cadres. And he's not been somebody who gets uh, worried by the kind of controversies, be it his watch controversy, be it uh, the controversy now by leaders from the BJP who have moved out, accusing him of, you know, authoritativeness or being very disciplined or ordering people. All these factors have not budged him. He has always put a straight foot forward. And we're seeing that the high command in Delhi has also been appreciating him for the work he's doing. He's been given a core in charge in Karnataka. That's a huge responsibility to be given to a very young politician. Hmm. My question to you, what makes him so popular? I think the age factor is one, the connecting factor is another. He's and what, he 37, 38? Yeah, that's about it. He's in his mid 30s. And most of the other politicians, even your young Udenidhi, is in his 40s. But Anamalai comes from a perception that he's a very normal uh, individual who comes from out of the politics uh, environment. He does not have a background in politics. Mm -hmm. He's a person who has served the people and has this Singham image that has been created from the Karnataka cadre, uh, which most of the people talk about him for. So those kind of factors do add to the attraction, I believe. And his interaction with the general public, uh, we've seen that, uh, you know, that he did have a little bit of a charismatic factor uh, in certain ways in which he talks to the youngsters, uh, you know, interacts with old people, goes for a meeting. And those things, I think, have been something that people look up to. And also the fact that he is not from a political fact 
family is a big advantage and when he raises a question and when the opposition or i mean the ruling government uh, does reply to him that in a way has also brought in questions of is anamale actually asking the right questions so those were the factors which we see that many of people are liking him or getting attracted to him for but again you know social media perception is different Uh, from what we will see on reality on ground so we need to see if all these popularity on social media the way he is impressed by people uh, or the way people get impressed by him on social media does convert to votes or not is something that we'll have to wait and watch so uh, sir we have another question from another viewer from our youtube channel and he's gone on to say dk i am from tamil nadu and this is my post there's so much anti bjp among people here and credit to anamala he's fighting it and taking on the dmk alliance but with nadda asking anamala to back off is in my opinion is in a very bad taste is the central bjp going a uh, congress way like making fadnavis playing second fiddle to ekna chinde and in tamil nadu not letting the party grow how will aiadmk allow bjp to eat into its vote base uh the look as for the first question is concerned uh i don't really think the aiadmk will try to raid in anamalai because he has become a popular persona in tamil nadu I mean, you don't want to rein him in as for part that he has to play second fiddle to somebody i don't think it's coming from the central leadership and i i don't really see that happening in fact hmm. that's a no from my side as for the second question whether how will the ai dmk allow the bjp to eat into its vote bank that's exactly what i was trying to convey when i was talking about the meghalaya instance where the bjp wanted to eat into its alliance uh, vote share which it's very successfully did in maharashtra also eating into sip sena's vote vote bank over the period of you know over a couple of decades three decades that's what bjp has been trying and it has been doing with many very such allies so that apprehension will also be there in eps's mind after all look the tamil nadu does not really have any hindu vote bank as such what we call mm. it but whatever vote bank that that uh, there is uh, could be what 5 10% 10% people if at all mm. and have been voting for the aia dmk so again that feeling will be there secondly uh, you know annamalai again he is a gounder hmm so is eps hmm there will be that competition you know to get that community on uh, on their side hmm bjp when it grows because dmk looks pretty uh, well in scons right now so bjp as it grows yes there will be apprehensions in the bai dmk leaders mind that bjp will be growing at the cost of the ai dmk whether ai dmk will allow it or not we'll have to wait and see because as i said conrad conrad sangma contained the bjp in meghalaya nephew has not been able to do that and nephew is actually being led by the bjp in a way bjp mm. nephew is also he also remains cm but for how long whether it's just the beginning because from 2% to 15% to 18% in three elections you may see bjp coming to 25% 30% maybe in the next couple of elections so how will it impact ndpp there we don't know similarly in tamil nadu we don't know how it will go but yes there have been instances in different states where the bjp has grown at the cost of its allies and sir i think the ai dmk in a way also knows that Uh, you know as the bjp grows they are also having a threat uh, as far as the vote share is concerned because yeah. jay jayalalitha used to be the face for the hindutva vote bank uh, because yeah. she was a brahmin but mm. with her going away and with just eps ops gounder tevas coming into the calculation bjp does project itself to be like the larger hindutva face and yes modi factor does play in uh, those hindu community factors mm. who vote against the dmk so uh, it is a huge fear factor for the ai dmk yes. and we've seen several of the senior leaders also talking about how they are very cautious about the bjp's growth so that factor will always be there absolutely so now moving on to the next question saura verma who is a user he has asked us do you see ai admk move towards hindutva in the near future or is it more likely to be swallowed by the bjp has bjp vote share been rising in tamil nadu since modi ji is taking over 
So we just discussed the first part of your question. As for the last way, what BJP's votes say, in fact, I just jotted down uh, the numbers. Now, uh, vote share as such, you don't really see any dramatic jump in the BJP's uh, vote share after Modi's arrival. Yes, in 2014 Lok Sabha election, when BJP was in alliance with the PMK and DMDK, DK, by the way, then BJP got 5.56% of the votes. Mm. Seat. That was without AIA and DMK. 5.56%. Percent in 2019 Lok Sabha election, when the BJP is in alliance with the AIDM, its vote share goes down to 3.6 percent. BJP wins, BJP contests five seats, loses all. So from 14 to 19, in fact, BJP went down despite the fact that a bigger party, AIADMK, was its alliance partners. That is for the Lok Sabha. If you look at assembly election. In 2016 assembly election, BJP's vote share is 2.84%. BJP has contested 188 seats then. Out of that, the vote share is 2.84% and seat zero. So if you come from 14 Lok Sabha to 16 assembly, again, Modi was a factor in 2014, 19. So I'm just segregating it. But from Lok Sabha to assembly, you already see the BJP's vote share coming down from 5.56 in 2014 to 2.84 in 2016 assembly, despite an alliance with the AIDMK. Then you go to 2019, again AIDMK in alliance. Marginal difference, if at all, in the BJP's vote share. BJP gets 3.6 percent vote share in 2019 Lok Sabha election. Again, two parties in alliance, AIDMK plus BJP. And Modi, when he's having that big wave across the country, bigger wave than 2014. Hmm. BJP's vote share comes down. In 2014, at least, it had one month seat. 2019, it, it did not win any seat at all. Then you come to 2021 low assembly. In 2021 assembly, uh, BJP's vote share further drops down. It comes down to 2.62%. Hmm. AIDM, as part of the alliance, uh, BJP have got to contest 20 seats and it managed to win four seats also. But the, if, when you look at the vote share, there's a consistent drop, 5.56% in 2014, Lok Sabha, 2.84% in 2016 Assembly, 3.6% in 2019 Lok Sabha, and 2.62% in 2021 Assembly. And that could be the vote. You will say that, okay, they won four seats out of the 20 they contested. So on the seats contested, their votes say might have uh, gone up to 40%, 41%. But the fact is, in, in the last assembly election, also 2016, when they had contested 188 seats, even then their vote share was 2.84. And here again, mm -hmm. it's 2.62. So that's probably the kind of vote share BJP has in Tamil Nadu. But I'm not ruling out, I'm not judging, I'm not going by what the BJP has achieved so far. We are just talking about the Nagaland example. And there are many states where BJP has gone from nowhere to the top. In Tripura, BJP was not a player at all. In 2018, suddenly it comes out as a victor. And today it's ruling there. It's, they've got a second consecutive term. So we are not dismissive, but big big point there is BJP never had a face in the state. No big mm. face. Anna Malai is becoming a face for the BJP. He is becoming popular among uh, people, youngsters especially. But whether the Dravidian people are really getting disillusioned with Dravidian politics. I am not sure because DMK has been getting support in one election after another. And the more oh. is that, you know, Tamil sub-nationalism thing, that more it's working. In, we saw in Erode East, mm. both factions of the AI DMK coming, BJP backing them, Congress won the seat. So coming to this point, whether the BJP will BJP's vote share will remain around this thing because even after Modi's Modi phenomenon happening across the country, that Modi wave happening across the country, in Tamil Nadu, it has not shown much impact, if at all, it's going down. But to come to the main point, they have got a face now, Annamala, he's becoming a factor. Number two, whether the BJP can create a new Hindu vote bank or whatever little it's there, 5%, 6%, 10%, can BJP appropriate that and expand it further. So if you look at the Pew Research Center, uh, I recall this recent study, uh, the Pew Research Center 
their study actually, uh, their survey showed that 42% people in South India believe that being a Hindu is central to the idea of India. Mm. You know, but of course, beauty research centers, surveys, you have the sample size will be very small. But 42%, of course, in North India, it was like 69, 70%, if I recall correctly, uh, correctly. But South India also, they're not specific to Tamil Nadu. So mm. maybe there were more uh, respondents in Karnataka or somewhere. But in South, the survey talked about South India, 42% being amenable to the idea of or basically thinking that, you know, you have to be a Hindu, that being Hindu is central to the idea of being still to the idea of India. Mm. How much that works in Tamil Nadu, how strong that feeling is, I don't know. It will depend because electorally, in one election after another, we've seen it's not working out. And so we're also seeing that Tamil Nadu is one of those states which has been resistant to the Modi wave. We've seen black flag protest here. Uh, we've seen uh, multiple other protests against Modi, Amit Shah, whenever they visit yeah. Tamil Nadu. And it's it's only getting stronger with the DMK and Congress uh, alliance but continuing. In fact, there are three states. Hmm. So uh, you have Punjab, Modi, Kerala, wave, Tamil Nadu. Punjab at all. You have Tamil Nadu and then you have Kerala too. Hmm. And I think that is also one of the reasons why we are not able to see the growth uh, exponentially in the state of Tamil Nadu. Exactly. And also talking about uh, 2019 elections, that was also a time when the AI and DMK was at its worst as well. All the splits, uh, we had seen TTV Dinakaran walking, uh, I mean, being removed, Sashikala being removed, the tiff between OPS, EPS was still evident back then also. So I think these factors also contributed, but surprising was the ERO-D sports because both of them were gounders. Be it uh, EPS and OPS and the Congo belt where ERODE is, uh, we had seen a terrible failure for them there. So that is very shocking. So we'll have to look forward but to the next. Also, the week. fact is, you know, uh, BJP never had a leader like, uh, say, Anamalai. Hmm. He was there, he was active, but he was lacking that firepower, that aggression that Anamalai is showing. Now, Anamalai hmm. was that Padayatra across the state uh, from April. Hmm. Yes. What kind of impact it will have, what kind of response it gets will also tell us the space for the BJP in the state. True. So, sir, Priyank Upadhyay has asked us another question. In case the AIADMK loses 2026 assembly elections, then do you see a possibility of the AIADMK merging itself with the BJP? Uh, very difficult. It's quite hypothetical, but I would say AIADMK is not gone yet. Even in the last assembly election, which they lost, AIDMK's vote say, if I'm not wrong, was 33%. Yes, about 60 plus seats. Yeah, so it's not that the AIDMK is getting finished or it will get will be over in 2026. They are very much present on the ground, but of course that erosion is happening after mm. January. Can, EP, can EPS stop that erosion, grow from here? We don't know. But to say that BJP will become so strong in 2026 that AIDMK will have to merge with it, that's a bit too much. <laughs> I don't go that far. And we've also seen that the Dravidian parties have been extremely strong in the state of Tamil Nadu with not permitting national parties since 1960s, if I'm not wrong. So that question I, might I, be... I, I don't really see BJP, I mean, even the BJP people even hoping that in the next 20 years... <laughs> one Dravidian party will march with them because they become, yeah. they become so powerful. So that's all the questions that we had from the viewers for the polygraph today. But interestingly, we're seeing that changes are happening on ground, but we will be keeping a close track on all the developments. I'm Akshya Nath, Senior Assistant Editor, and with me is DK Singh. We will catch you on another important topic in the next episode of Polygraph. Thank you, Akshay.